Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. This is now part two of the 2022 college football prediction show. Um, part one, we did my standings projections from every conference, and I unveiled who I had winning each conference. All right, so now we're going to get into the college football playoff. Um, so the one seed I have, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the Peach Bowl. Playing your number four seed, the USC Trojans. Yes, Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, and the Trojans in the playoff their first year as they beat out the likes of Michigan and Oklahoma and Notre Dame for that last playoff spot. Um, So I have them facing off against Alabama in the Peach Bowl, which should be a great game down in Georgia. I just think that Bryce Young and the Tide will roll to their... Um, third consecutive championship game. So give me Alabama over USC. And then the Fiesta Bowl, I have two-seed Ohio State against three-seed Georgia from Arizona. Should be a great game. CJ Stroud and Ohio State against the reigning champions. Sometimes it's just really hard to repeat as champions in any sport. Give me Ohio State and CJ Stroud to defeat Georgia and their hopes and dreams of repeating. And in the college football playoff national championship on January 9th, that would be a Monday, Alabama against Ohio State, the two best quarterbacks in the entire sport, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I have winning the 2022 college football playoff national championship, really 2023, but the 22 season, the Alabama Crimson Tide. And the most outstanding players will be Bryce Young and Will Anderson, respectively, on offense and defense. All right, so New Year's Six Bowls. Um, December 30th, it's the Orange Bowl. I have Pitt against Utah. The Sugar Bowl on New Year's Eve. So the Sugar Bowl gets moved from New Year's Day to New Year's Eve because New Year's Day is a Sunday and because of NFL Sunday. So the Sugar Bowl moves to New Year's Eve. I have Texas A&M and Oklahoma, and that's going to be a matinee game. And then the two playoff games will be on after that. And then January 2nd, the Monday, I have the Cotton Bowl, Cincinnati against Notre Dame, and then the Rose Bowl between Oregon and Michigan. All right, the other bowl games. Um, So December 16th, the Bahamas Bowl, I have UAB against Northern Illinois, the Cure Bowl, FAU versus Marshall. December 17th, that's a Saturday, Fenway Bowl, NC State against East Carolina, New Mexico Bowl, Western Kentucky against Colorado State. L.A. Bowl. Arizona State against San Diego State. The Lending Tree Bowl. Ball State against Texas State. The Vegas Bowl. Cal against South Carolina. Frisco Bowl. San Jose State against Louisiana. Monday, December 19th, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. I have Appalachian State against... So Myrtle Beach, you have App State, FIU. Idaho Potato Bowl on Tuesday, December 20th. Toledo, Boise State. Boca Raton Bowl, Air Force against UCF. December 21st, that's the Wednesday, New Orleans Bowl, Charlotte against Georgia State. December 22nd, that's the Thursday, Armed Forces Bowl, Memphis against UTEP. December 23rd, the Independence Bowl, Tulsa against BYU. The Gasparilla Bowl, Arkansas against Louisville, Christmas Eve is Saturday. The Hawaii Bowl, UTSA against Hawaii, so Hawaii and the Hawaii Bowl. The day after Christmas, December 26th, that's the Monday, the Quick Lane Bowl, Wisconsin against Bowling Green. December 27th, the Camellia Bowl, Buffalo against Coastal Carolina, First Responder Bowl, UNLV against West Virginia, the Birmingham Bowl, Missouri against Tulane, and the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, Minnesota against Texas Tech. Wednesday, the 28th, the Military Bowl, Florida State against Houston, the Liberty Bowl, Kansas State against Ole Miss, the Holiday Bowl, North Carolina against Oregon State, the Texas Bowl, Baylor against LSU, the 29th, that's the Thursday, the Pinstripe Bowl, Syracuse against Michigan State, the Cheez It Bowl, Clemson against Texas, and the Alamo Bowl, Oklahoma State against Washington State. The 30th, that's a Friday, the Mayo Bowl, Miami against Nebraska, the Sun Bowl, Wake Forest against UCLA, the Gator Bowl, Virginia Tech against Tennessee, and the Arizona Bowl, Utah State against Central Michigan. December 31st, that's New Year's Eve, the Music City Bowl, Penn State against Mississippi State, and then Monday the 2nd, you have the Relia Quest Bowl between Florida and Iowa. And the Citrus Bowl between Purdue and 
Auburn. So there you have it for bowl projections and whatnot. Now um, awards and stuff. So my pick to win the Heisman Trophy this year, C.J. Stroud of Ohio State. Coming in second, Bryce Young, Alabama. Third, Will Anderson, Alabama. Fourth, Bajan Robinson, Texas. And fifth will go Caleb Williams, USC. Um, so, so futures. Um, in terms of Heisman and such. Um, so, um, CJ Stroud's actually the two to one favorite to win it. I didn't realize he was favored. Um, Caleb Williams is six to one. Um, Will Anderson's 30. B. John Robinson's 40. Miami uh, Tyler Van Dyke is 40. Um, if I had to make a value play for the Heisman Trophy, I will take a quarterback in a decent conference that I think has a chance to almost win double digit games, and that's Oklahoma State's Spencer Sanders at 80 to 1 to win the Heisman. Value play to make the college football playoff. USC plus 340. I have them in it. And the favorite teams are the big three of Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia. Clemson's plus 125. USC's plus 340. That's my fourth team in. Utah's a good one at 6-1. to one. Oklahoma's plus 450. If I had to make one more value play, Pitt, 15-1. to one. I have them winning the ACC this year. And I think that look, roster is absolutely loaded. Um, conference winners. Um, Clemson's a minus 155 favorite. My value pick is Pitt, 10 to 1. I have them winning the ACC. Mine as well. Big 12, Oklahoma's a 2 to 1 favorite. Value play on the board. I'm going to take as my value pick. This is a hard one because this is a, a decent conference, and I think these odds are pretty much on the money here. But Oklahoma State at plus 550 to win the Big 12 is actually um, not bad. Big 10, um, my value pick to win this conference at 40-1, to 1, the Purdue Boilermakers. I have them winning the West Division, so might as well take them at 40-1 to 1 to win the conference as a value play. Pac-12 winner value play. Um, USC is the favorite plus 170, but if I had to pick a value play, Let's get crazy. Oregon State, 32-1. to 1. They have a lot of players returning. That's a really um, program that's really like on the rise, so why not? SEC, obviously, Alabama is a minus 140 favorite. If there's a value play on the board that I like, there's so many good ones. But a team I have going 8-4 and four this year is 150-1. to one. That's Auburn. Like Auburn's better than one fifty to one to win the SEC. The American, um, Houston's actually a two to one favorite over Cincinnati, who's plus two twenty, and I have Cincinnati winning the conference. But if I had to pick a play based on pure value to win this conference with a really good quarterback who's a veteran, East Carolina twenty five to one. Why not? Conference USA, um, UAB is a 2-1 to one favorite, co-favorite with UTSA. If I had a value pick, it's UTEP at 16-1. to Because I have them going 9-3 and three this year. The MAC, the favorite's Toledo at plus 340. If I had a sneaky dark horse to win the MAC, give. Me, Buffalo, at 25-1. to 1. I have them winning their division, so might as well. 25-1 to is a good number. The Mountain West. Fresno is actually favored at plus 230. I think they're going to be disappointing this year. But if I make a value play, um, it's a team that I have going 7-5 and five on the year, but second in their division. Colorado State at 30 to 1 is pretty good value. And then the Sun Belt, App State's a plus 240 favorite. Cole's still the winner from last year's plus 440. But if I had to make a value play in the Sun Belt, it's the team 
that I have winning the West Division. They're 50-1 to to win the conference, and that's the Texas State Bobcats. That is great value on them. And where is... Oh, they're plus 350. You well, well. But Texas State at plus um, 5,000 to win the conference is great value. Division winner value. ACC Atlantic. If it's not Clemson, then who? Maybe the quarterback from Wake comes back. They're 14-1. to So Wake would be the value play. ACC Coastal. Pitts might pick. They're 3-1. to But if I had a value pick, it's... Oof. Um, probably North Carolina at 6-1. to I have them in fourth in their division, but they can be better than that. Uh, Big 10 East, Ohio State's actually favored... And not and uh, deservingly so. Um, if there's a value play in that division. It's Michigan at six to one. Big Ten West. Um, Purdue six to one might as well. That's my pick in that division. SEC East. Um, a play outside of Georgia that might be worth looking at. Um, who do I have in second in that division? Florida. Yes. And they're sixteen to one. And ex South Carolina is interesting too at forty to one. What if Spencer Rattler shows off his potential, and maybe um, they pick some teams off in the season? Maybe Georgia has some injuries. Forty to one is not a bad number. And then SEC West, um, Auburn a hundred to one. Like that's absolutely bonkers of odds for them to win. Their division. Those odds are brought to you by FanDuel. And now I'm going to talk about um, some totals that I placed bets on um, on FanDuel. Um, first one is Purdue over 7.5 and plus 140. Um, great value. Um, I think Purdue wins their division. So might as well go over on their win total. Kansas under 2.5 plus 125. Um, Kansas under is a yearly tradition. Auburn over 6, minus 115. One of my favorite plays on the board. I think Auburn will be much better than they were a year ago. SMU under 7, even money. I don't think SMU is going to be very good. Schedule is not favorable to them. Syracuse over 4.5 and and minus 115. I think that is tremendous value on a team that brings a lot back. Washington under 7.5 and plus 115. I think that is really good value. Hard schedule. UAB over 8.5 at minus 110. I think they win their division. So that's an easy over. Fresno State under 9 at minus 110. I think this is an overhyped team in the Mountain West Conference. Bowling Green over 4.5 at plus 125. They're going to be one of the more surprising teams in terms of teams that are, have been awful the last couple of years that will improve. Kind of reminds me of UTEP from a couple of years ago. BYU over 8.5 and, and minus 105. The disrespect is for BYU. They've been so good the last several years. And James Madison under 5.5 and, and minus 110 because James Madison's new to the party, and I just don't think they're going to make a bowl in year one in the FBS. I think our, I shouldn't say that because they're not eligible for a bowl because of their transfer, but I don't see them... Um, having a 500 or better record, we'll put it that way for James Madison, in their first year in the FBS. All right, so miscellaneous predictions. I'll do one per conference. Um, we'll start in the American. Um, my prediction for the American Conference this year is that... Um, Luke Fickle finally moves on from Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati is a really good program. Um, I think there's going to be a job that opens up, and I think Luke Fickle will say, see ya. Thanks for the great years. Thanks for the great six years. ACC, I'm going to predict that Dino Babers won't be back as Syracuse head coach despite having a solid season. Um, I just think he's a coach on the hot seat. He's been there for a while, and I think they might want to move on. And um, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, 
Big Ten prediction. Um, I'm going to say that Michigan-Ohio State will be the game of the year, perhaps in the entire sport. I just think it's going to be a great game this year. Even though um, Ohio State has big revenge on their mind, Michigan wants to prove that they belong on the same playing field with them yet again. The Big 12, I will predict that the Texas Longhorns will end up being looked upon as a team of what-ifs in terms of some important players um, not being available for them for the season. And that they're going to say if these two guys were healthy, they'd be the best team in the Big 12. The Conference USA, I'm going to say that there will be multiple teams with double-digit wins. I'm going to double down on that prediction for the Conference USA. Independent. I'm going to say that this is Kalani Sataki's final year at BYU. He's been amazing as their head coach, and I think he wants to move on to a larger program, even though BYU is his alma mater. Um, the MAC. I am going to say that um, the coach of the year in the conference will be Scott Loeffler. Um, after um, he gets Bowling Green to a bowl game. The Mountain West. I am going to say that the Mountain West will have more than six teams in, in bowl games, and which is an accomplishment for their conference. You obviously have Boise and San Diego State. You have Hawaii. You um, have a team that I think is going to surprise in UNLV. You have Fresno. You have Utah State. You have Colorado State. So I think they're going to have more than six in a bowl game. The Pac-12, I'm going to predict and double down on the USC to the college football playoff prediction in Lincoln Riley's first season. The SEC, I'm going to predict that the best quarterback in this conference will obviously be Bryce Young, but the second best quarterback in this conference will be Spencer Rattler, by a mile. And the Sun Belt, I am going to predict that James Madison won't win multiple conference games. I'm going to triple down on the James Madison call right there because I had them with a lousy record. I picked their under, and I'm just going to double down with that for the Sun Belt prediction. Okay, some dream matchups that we'd like to see in bowl games. Obviously, um, Oklahoma against USC. Maybe that's a college football playoff if one of the big three underachieves. Um, or maybe you'll see that in, like, the Alamo Bowl or something like that. Or some random bowl game, maybe. If, like, say, Utah makes the playoff and the big three get in. Or it's the big three in Notre Dame. And you have those two in a in a bowl game. That would be a lot of fun. Um, Oklahoma against South Carolina because of uh, Spencer Rattler. Oklahoma against Clemson because of Brent Venables against Clemson. Maybe you'll get that in a bowl game. Maybe that's the uh, the Orange Bowl or something if um, there's some underachieving. And maybe that's a college football playoff if one of the big three underachieves. Obviously, Alabama, Georgia... Some people are sick of it. I'm not. That's the the top two in the SEC. 
Um, Oregon against Auburn because it's Bo Nix against his former team. USC against either West Virginia or Pitt because of JT Daniels and Kelvin Slovis. Or West Virginia against Georgia because of JT Daniels. Um, so that would be interesting as well. Um, Notre Dame versus LSU because of Brian Kelly. That would be a lot of fun. Um, another one that I could see people getting hyped about is Cincinnati against Ohio State because uh, Luke Fickle used to be a coach for Ohio State. So that would be kind of interesting. Um, so there's a lot of other ones. I usually like when like transfers play their ex-teams or coaches play their ex-teams. Like That's always like fun subplots, especially if like somehow Notre Dame and uh, LSU hooked up or Oklahoma Clemson comes of Venables. Oklahoma USC because of Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams. There's a lot of them. Um, obviously, um, Texas Alabama's this year. Steve Sarkeesian against Bama, so we're gonna see that this year. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna see that in a couple of weeks. So um, those are the ones I can come up with on top of my head, and um, we'll call it um a show for uh, the 2022 college football prediction show. Um, I hope you guys. Enjoyed it.